Hello everyone, here we go again. Um, sorry for the delay in sending you this uh, class. I think is the class is ready since last week, but I am have some troubles with the softwares to do, uh, to record uh, this class. For example, I didn't manage to uh, put this presentation of PowerPoint in my uh, MacBook and you not appear for you guys for example a laser point or anything that I can draw in the slides because the PowerPoint for a Mac seems to be seems to have uh, seems to do not have this option uh, in the other way, I have another computer here which works with uh, Windows, but I don't have a microphone. My microphone is not working this computer, so it's it has been five days that I'm trying to solve this. But yeah, sorry, it didn't work. I hope the next time I have a microphone, then I can work in my Microsoft uh, computer. Anyway, so today we are going to talk about metabolic networks. Uh, it's not really part of the biochemistry course. I mean, it's not mandatory to us. So this is an extra class for you guys. Uh, just because I realized that you guys don't have this background about networks and mainly about metabolic networks and I decided to do this uh, for you guys so I hope you uh, enjoy uh, before we we talk about metabolic networks I have to introduce you to the world of systems biology and network biology okay so I, give, I will give you a brief introduction of what is this and then we move uh, into a metabolic network. So this is the theoretical part and the next class we are going to uh, make a hands-on uh, class. Okay. Uh, so we are going to see this network many times today. Okay. Uh, don't get scared. <laughs> I know that is very complex. That there, uh, there are a lot of information here. So this is a typical protein-protein interaction network. So each uh, dot here is a protein, and you have a link between them when they interact with each other. Okay, this is from East protein protein network of yeast okay so the what you can see here so just pause your slide and think on what kind of information you can have here before knowing everything that I'm going to say today well I I have to admit that the first time that I saw this uh, graph, we call this as a graph. Uh, I, I like it. It was like, oh, this is beautiful. <laughs> but at the same time, I was shocked because, okay, if every single circle here is a protein, there, there are a lot of proteins, there are a lot of interactions, and uh, what kind of the question was what kind of information I can have from here so this was something that uh, intrigued me and uh, and makes me be more interested to in the world of uh, networks but uh, after today the class today I think you you are going to understand a little bit more about what kind of information we can have from a very complex graph like this. 
So before we go directly to the networks, uh, just giving a brief uh, overview about the historical, um, the, the history of network biology. So the science had a huge advance when we had the genome of humans and Arab dogs sequencing around 2000. So it has been it have been 20 years since then. So, but the thing is, at that time, uh, what we got was this information here. So a lot of nucleotides. And uh, the next uh, aim was to understand what kind of information this genome contains and how can we use this information to understand uh, disease, to understand how plants can grow, to understand how humans can, uh, how humans, how can we improve uh, plant drought tolerance, for example, or any other stress tolerance. So. Uh, the genomics uh, era, uh, uh, sorry, it's wrong, genomics here. Uh, genomics era was uh, the beginning of the systems biology era. But after that, um, the next uh, question was to understand the function of the genome. I mean, we have the DNA and then we have the RNA, but what is the function of the genes? And then we started the era of post-genomics, as we call also as functional genomics. The aim was to understand the function of the genes that compose every organism, okay? So for this, uh, we created, we scientists, we created uh, several platforms to make some large-scale analysis, for example, transcriptome, proteomics, metabolomics, eonomics, fluxomics, lipidomics, and so on. So today we have a huge uh, spectrum of omics platforms that can do large-scale analysis in different levels, okay? Um, but the thing is, for example, at the beginning, uh, microarray analysis, and today RNSEC is also doing this, they provide, for example, for Arabidopsis, which is the model organism for plants, they provide more than 20, 26,000 genes at the same time. So you take the RNA from your sample, you run a microarray or RNA sec, and you have 26,000 genes to analyze. It's a huge uh, amount of information. And if you combine this with proteins, we get more than 1,000 proteins. And if you combine it with different platforms of metabolomics, you can get almost 1,000 uh, metabolites. Depends on the, on the platforms that you are going to use. So, the question was how to integrate this huge amount of information? How to integrate transcriptomics with proteomics with metabolomics? How to interpret transcriptomics? How to interpret metabolomics, fluxomics, and so on? So, uh, for this, uh, it was necessary to create a new uh, research area, which is the bioinformatics. So, Today we have uh, people expert in, com uh, in computer science doing works for biology. This is extremely important. If you don't know bioinformatics, you have to know, you have to learn this because it's, it's mandatory today, okay? Even if you are biochemist or biology or agronomist, do, do, does not matter. You have to understand bioinformatics. A little bit of bioinformatics and modeling and so on. So, uh, what what these guys are doing? They are integrating these informations and uh, they are using uh, tools from the physics, from the mathematics, to help to understand 
this huge amount of information. Uh, some questions rise it. So how to connect these levels? Uh, can the parts represent the whole organism? I mean, uh, this question is, is very important because uh, we assume we had we, we assume that analyzing a small part of our organism we can we infer about the whole organism but this is something not right so the whole organism uh, sometimes you can you can't see uh, some of the main response because you are not analyzing this you are just analyzing the parts okay so the the answer for the these questions can the parts represent the whole organism is no we cannot believe in the parts we have to to look to the whole organism okay um, another important question is what is the complexity of the dynamics dynamics of gene expression dynamics of metabolic uh, accumulation protein expression and so on so this is um, sometimes is the, the dynamic is more important than the accumulation of the gene of the protein or the metabolite per se. So sometimes you don't have change in average of the gene expression or metabolite content, but you have a huge difference in the dynamics, which changes completely the organism. Okay, so. Uh, and we are seeing today that the dynamics of metabolism is really complex, really complex. So, um, is there any mathematical model that can predict bio biological process or biological response? So, I made this question almost 10 years ago. I'm using this slide for 10 years. And uh, at that time, we didn't have answer for that question. We were in the beginning, but today this is kind of well established. We have a lot of mathematical models that can predict biological process, a lot. So this is very, very important because uh, if you have a model that can predict some response, uh, your way to do science change because you can run the model, raise questions, and thus and just go to the lab to confirm or not th this uh, hypothesis created by the models. Okay, for example, today we have models that um, by they can predict the behavior of the plant in the field. So you have you can. Uh, or under the change in the metabolism under stress or uh, under non-stress. So you have very good models, especially for metabolism. We are going to see some of them today. So to answer all of these questions, uh, together with post-genomics, um, we have this systems biology era which is basically using modeling uh, theory from physics, from the systems theory from physics, and uh, are using these networks to integrate this kind of information to understand the dynamic and to understand stress tolerance and so on. So networks, metabolic networks, are a part uh, a single part of the system's uh, biology approach. So, systems biology, 